In the world of handheld gaming, it's very difficult for us gamers to squeeze out that extra performance we need to get a locked stable 30, 40, or even 60 FPS. Unfortunately, AMD and a lot of the different firmware that's out there for our devices just keeps us locked down and we can't push our devices any further. But I've got good news, my friends, where AMD sort of drops the ball in this regard, the innovation comes directly from the community and the companies that are bringing us our handheld devices through tools like Auto TDP. Hey guys, Trick here, I hope you're having a good one. Here on the channel, we talk about all things tech, and I love looking at how our devices tick and how they operate, from CPUs, GPUs, and even to our lovely handheld devices. And with the newest generation of handheld devices from the likes of a and Neo and GPD and AOK Zoe, we have new boosting technologies that I want to kind of highlight and show to you guys how they actually work. Now these tools can be known as Auto TDP or Smart TDP or some other nomenclature that the companies like to use, but they all use a very similar boosting technique. But before we get into the nitty gritty of Smart TDP and Auto TDP, I want to show you guys how our handheld devices boost in their default mode using AMD's intended boosting techniques. Traditionally, processors regulate themselves across three different variables, temperature, power, and clock speed. Take for example temperature. If the processor gets too hot, AMD's firmware will dial back the clock frequency to reduce power and keep temperatures in check. The same goes for power, or sometimes called the load. If you're looking at the sky in Cyberpunk, you'll be getting high FPS with high clock speeds. But if you pull your heads out of the clouds and look at the bustling scene, power consumption will spike. In order to control power, firmware drops our frequencies considerably, and in turn, lowering our frame rate. So this theory makes sense on paper, but how does it actually pan out in real world gameplay? Here, we're running Forza Horizon 5 from our beachfront garage in a pretty straight path. By default, my AOK Zoe A1 runs its 6800U APU in 15 watt mode, which remains true throughout the run. Given the low power, its thermal solution keeps the device running at a comfortable 60 degrees Celsius. Since we are within standard temperatures, but already bumping up against our processor's TDP setting, our frequencies will have to duke it out to balance themselves for performance. The CPU hovers between 1.5 and 2 GHz, well below its rated base clock speed. As for the GPU, it's averaging right about 1.1 GHz, half its advertised clock speed. In an interesting twist, they do appear to be reflective. As the CPU clock increases, the GPU clock decreases, and vice versa. With our three key variables understood, our frame rate appears to track with the GPU clock, floating between the upper 40s and just above 60 FPS. In a traditional approach, it would be safe to say we can comfortably play Forza Horizon 5 at 40 Hz stable at about 15 watts. At first glance, it would appear that 40 FPS in Forza Horizon 5 is a pretty good balance between frame rate and visual quality, especially since the game already looks so good. But wouldn't it be great if we could get a locked 60 FPS, especially in a racing game where timing can be super critical in a race and the jitteriness of 40 Hz might not be ideal. Now it's time to introduce Auto TDP. With Auto TDP, we replace the power constraints from our boosting algorithm from before and we replace it with our system performance. As a gamer, this solution is ideal. As we game, we want to see a fluid experience. We could always use frame limiters or use VSync, but these often reduce our performance instead of improving it. To do that, we remove the frame limits and dynamically control our power consumption. So, as our frame rate drops, we want to increase either the CPU or GPU clock, which in turn increases the power. But if our frame rate is above target, we could drop our clock speeds down, thus also decreasing our power consumption. Of course, this will impact the thermals of our device, but that is managed externally of our current control scheme. So let's pull up the same test sequence from Forza Horizon 5 from my garage. I've set my target frame rate to be 60, and as we alt tab back into the game, the software begins ramping up the GPU frequency to achieve the target frame rate in green. 
around 1450 megahertz. Now I have disabled CPU clock adjustments for reasons we'll discuss shortly, but overall the CPU hovers around 2200 megahertz. With that increase, our package fluctuates around 18 watts on average, which would be about a 3 watt increase from our stock operation. And I've got to say, that is pretty darn cool. Without knowing how our system operates and only defining our target frame rate, this sort of tool should be able to allow us to have a pretty good experience across the board. Not so fast. As good as this looks on paper, these types of broad statements will always set us up for failure. Right now, the current implementation of Auto TDP or Smart TDP is very slow. In the traditional sense, AMD can boost their devices in real time due to the nature of their firmware and where the algorithm operates. For us, Auto TDP mechanisms are after the fact and as such are less reactive. Here we have a different stretch of road to eliminate frame rate inconsistency and I've set the tool to hit 40 FPS. In the span of about 10 seconds, the tool goes from being above our target, then undershooting the target, then landing close enough, and unfortunately ramping back up to full speed. In a practical sense, this would happen within a second when run with the AMD firmware. Next, this mechanism is problematic for dynamic or noisy games. In the same sample, within one second, we see a 6 FPS swing in performance, which will be very difficult to diagnose properly, especially considering this is a stable spot in less than a quarter mile of track. Looking back to earlier in my video, do y'all remember how I mentioned adjusting the CPU clock? Both the CPU and GPU components of the APU impact our power requirements, so tweaking CPU clock speed can be beneficial for giving the GPU a bit more breathing room. However, CPU clock speed is mandatory for the effective delivery of frames. With the current state of the tool, CPU clock speeds can dip below 1 GHz, artificially dropping frame rate to sub 30 FPS and even 20 FPS. This is counterproductive and needs to be either fixed or bypassed, and I've opted for the latter. And that brings me to my final issue with these types of tools. Most of the time, they are community driven and community supported. I've been working with Cfray over in the GPD Discord and we've worked on some of the usability of the tool which has made this video possible. However, this sort of tool requires a lot of testing, development, and integration. Many games and types of devices can run this sort of tool and the community can only validate so much. AMD has the resources and the manpower to implement this type of feature, so it makes sense that this tool has its limitations. But I've got to give a huge shout out to Cfray, the Fox, as well as the rest of the community over at the GPD Discord. This tool has come a long way, and with any luck, it'll get even better in the near future. Having addressed the benefits as well as some of the shortcomings of this type of boosting technology, where do we see Auto TDP or Smart TDP making sense in our handheld devices? An obvious choice here is retro gaming. Console games are usually developed to run at either 30 or 60 FPS locked out of the box, so turning on Auto TDP and letting the tool fine tune your experience is a no brainer. Retro gaming is a fairly static load in terms of an APU, so keeping as many variables static only improves the likelihood of Auto TDP doing the right thing. Another instance is games that already operate well above your performance threshold. Take for instance F1 2020. This game runs well above 60 FPS on the A1 at 15 watts, so let Auto TDP tune our clock speeds up or down as it sees fit. In due time, Auto TDP and Smart TDP are only going to become more refined and much more effective. With a better user interface, users will be more comfortable tweaking the settings to fine tune their experience. With a bit more testing, we can refine the frequency searching algorithm to prevent over and undershoots. And with a bit more support, the community can help make handheld gaming much more enjoyable. And that's all I've got to say about Smart TDP and Auto TDP. For now, I have gotten notification that my a Neo Geek is on its way and I can't wait to get my hands on that device and put it up head to head with the Steam Deck. 
So if y'all want to see that video when it drops, make sure you hit subscribe down below as well as hit that bell icon. Because guys, I think that device is going to be a pure competitor when it comes to the Steam Deck. But thank you guys for sticking to the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Y'all can always catch me directly over on Twitter at the Turk, and I'll hopefully catch you guys in the next one. Take care.